Crazy alert! Japanese government officials have taken a look at living conditions for survivors of the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. They found that over the past year, more than 1,600 of those people died, many of them elderly. Reconstruction agency officials found the health of many survivors deteriorated in stressful living conditions. Many lost their homes and were living in makeshift housing. The deaths occurred in 10 prefectures. As of the end of March, the highest number of deaths occurred in Fukushima with more than 760. I know there's a lot riding on it, but it's all psychological. Miyagi Prefecture had the second highest number, followed by Iwate. Just got to stay in a positive frame of mind. I'm going to execute a button hook pattern super slow-mo. <sighs> Agency officials say some people may have died because they were unable to go to hospital. Researchers will continue with their work in an effort to learn why and when the victims died. Let's see that in an instant replay. <laughs> Nearly 16,000 people died directly because of the earthquake and tsunami. Japan's Nuclear and Industry Safety Agency, or NISA, says it will draw up new safety standards regarding the impact of tsunami on nuclear power plants. In addition to the height of tsunami, the standards will also address the penetration and pressure exerted by the powerful waves. Last year's giant tsunami flooded emergency generators at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, a situation that led to multiple meltdowns. Experts say assumptions regarding the potential force and reach of the tsunami were inadequate. The waves that hit the plant were 13 meters high, about 7 meters above projected levels. They inundated all major facilities. A turbine building closest to the shore was flooded to a height of 5.5 meters above the floor. The pressure of the tsunami forced the entrance door and water gushed in through air vents and hatches. The emergency generators and power panel located in the basement were flooded. NISA announced it will use a new yardstick for the design of nuclear power plants. New criteria will include the pressure exerted by a tsunami in the areas it's likely to reach. Experts discuss the use of these criteria to check the resilience of safety equipment. They will also examine how frequently large-scale tsunami occur. UN officials have given Japan control over more of the seabed around its shores, the areas they now recognize as Japanese hold rare metals and other natural resources. The UN Convention on the Law of the Sea defines how much of the seabed a country controls around its shores. Japan originally controlled 4 million square kilometers. UN officials approved a Japanese claim for a bigger area. They gave the country control over another 310,000 square meters of seabed around islands in the Pacific. Chinese and South Korean government officials opposed the expansion. They say one of the islands is only a coral atoll. The seabed around some of the islands contains copper and rare metals. Officials at Japan's foreign ministry say control over those areas is vital to the country's interests. Workers in Chernobyl are marking the 26th anniversary of the accident there with another effort to limit the damage. They're building a new shelter to cover the one built after the disaster. They fear the old shell might collapse and release radioactive substances. <laughs> The work got underway 26 years to the day after the reactor exploded during the test. Ukrainian government officials plan to build an arch-shaped containment building more than 100 meters high. It will cover the shell around reactor number 4. Workers expect to complete construction in three years. The cost, more than 1.2 billion dollars. I am pleased to say that Ukraine was not left alone to face the tragedy. We felt the whole world came to help us. The evidence of that is the financial support of the countries that donated to the Chernobyl Fund. 
In the COVID stress, the international cooperation has become more crucial after the accident last year at Fukushima Daiichi. The president promised to help the two million people affected by the disaster. Still, former plant workers and residents held a rally in Kiev. They say the government is not doing enough. Y'all, uh, I'll stick you my hat.